We've told you about some of the shipwrecks that can be found in the waters of the Great Lakes, but you may be surprised to find that those ships aren't the only pieces of our nation's history that are sitting at the bottom of the lakes. A&T Recovery searches for sunken treasure, but not chests full of Spanish doubloons. They hunt for World War II era aircraft that have been sitting in these waters for decades. The planes weren't lost in combat. They went down as the U.S. raced to train thousands of pilots after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Teres Lysenko is one of the founders of A&T. The political mood of the time before the uh, attacking of Pearl Harbor, the American population wanted nothing to do with the war in Europe and the war in Asia. That was their far off war. But then when the Japanese attacked at Pearl Harbor, then the entire nation said, let's go to war. Well, keeping in line with that, let's keep out of war, the nation wasn't ready to go to war. The Navy needed pilots who could take off and land on aircraft carriers. But there were German U-boats patrolling the East Coast. If you try to qualify um, a pilot on a training aircraft carrier where a submarine is shooting torpedoes at you, it gets really hard if you're, it's not easy, right? So, and then off the west coast, the Japanese actually had really good submarines. So they were, there were submarines off of both coasts. So where are you gonna train people, qualify them? The Navy looked to the Great Lakes. Two excursion ships were purchased and wooden flight decks were added to create makeshift aircraft carriers. In October of 1942, in the waters of Lake Michigan, the U.S. Navy started qualifying 15,000 pilots to take off and land on those ships, the USS Wolverine and the USS Sable. So what happened was these pilots didn't have a lot of experience. It's not like today where they go through several years of training. It wasn't easy. so about 130 aircraft ended up in the lake, which is a really small number for all the landings and takeoffs they had to do and 15,000 pilots. So about 130 end up in the lake. They recovered about 10 of them, leaving about 120 aircraft, so which, is, which was happy hunting grounds for us. Terrace began searching for the lost planes in the 1980s. We went to the National Archives and got the log records we read every single log page of the USS Wolverine and USS Sable that indicated all the radar positionings of where they thought they lost the aircraft. And, and then we got really good side scan sonar and we started finding aircraft after aircraft after aircraft. To date, a and Recovery, working with the National Aviation Museum, has rescued 40 planes from the depths of Lake Michigan. For lifting it, we use our own uh, trade, trade secret, but we use the built-in lifting assemblies generally of the aircraft to lift them. And when they're over 100 feet deep, we use remote operated vehicles to hook our lifting equipment onto those things, which is, which is a whole talent in itself. But getting the wrecks out of the lake is only the beginning. These planes have been sitting in the bottom of the lake for decades, and they're in rough shape. Before they become glistening museum pieces, they have to be meticulously restored. And often that happens here at the Air Zoo in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Troy Thrash is the Air Zoo's president and CEO. The Air Zoo is an interactive aerospace and science experience. Over the last 43 years, we've built now, we have over 200,000 square feet of exhibit space, over 100 rare and unique aircraft and spacecraft, amusement park rides related to aviation, full motion flight simulators, a theater, all kinds of hands-on education programs. Recently, the Air Zoo completed a five-year restoration of a Douglas Dauntless SBD-2P dive bomber that was shipped to the Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum in Hawaii. Although the work done at the Air Zoo is largely a volunteer effort, the museum's unique approach to restoration gives even museum visitors a chance to be part of the process. We invite people behind the ropes to get up close and personal with the restorations. And in some cases, they even get to work on our aircraft that we're restoring. It's kind of fun knowing that someone in the past built that and you're recreating what they built, kind of bringing back their legacy. OK, you are good. You're hired. <laughs> The Air Zoo team has been working to renovate an FM2 Wildcat for the past 10 years. Progress is slow because the plane was so badly damaged. Greg Ward is the aircraft restoration manager at the Air Zoo. 
That airplane took off from the carrier sable. The engine quit, it crashed in the water, rolled upside down with the pilot still in it. Then the ship ran over it. When the ship ran over it, it broke it in half. Thankfully, the pilot didn't get a scratch. The exceptional restoration work being done at the Air Zoo has been recognized by the National Park Service. The Air Zoo was recently awarded over $400,000 through the federal Save America's Treasures program. The funds will be used to restore a very unique plane. So for the next three years, we are going to be able to really drive the restoration of the SBD-1 that we're restoring. In fact, the only one of its kind in the world. 57 were built, this is the only one left. The team at the Air Zoo is committed to preserving a piece of American aviation history and sharing their passion with a new generation. You know, to get middle school kids to hang out with a 94-year-old engine mechanic, for example, and it's neat to watch them interact, and it's neat to see the kids learning from somebody that is so knowledgeable, and he's passing the torch. Just the idea that the work that we do here is gonna go so far beyond our doors, our region, but shared around the country. It is inspiring for us and it is inspiring for our team every day. Our volunteers knowing that the work that they are going to do is going to be spread around the country, is gonna be felt around the country, is really a gigantic inspiration for our team. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.